I made this circuit in the past and also published it on YouTube and I want to say do a kind of a retro act and it's all about flat coils uh, you know perhaps uh, when you are a little bit acquainted with electronics that uh, say the normal in a certain way normal coil uh, looks say uh, made as it is made on a cylindrical form let me say show that in a cylindrical form so uh, well I have of course showed many many of these cars in the past uh, well this is a good example of a such a coil wound on a piece of PVC or whatever in a cylindrical form anyway uh, but this coil is made in a completely other way and when you know a little bit about the old school uh, coils and then I mean 1920s 1930s they often made a coil in this way here uh, wound on say a piece of uh, material that isolated uh, electricity and then with all these say kinds of pieces here and then the uh, the coil was wound here uh, from the top going to the underside here to the top etc etc and I found that such a coil has good properties so when you want to do experiments with radios on AM or whatever this could be a good solution uh, and in that case uh, I want to refer to the old radio books etc etc but you can also do all these experiments uh, yourself when making such a coil let me pan over somewhat here and perhaps this is not a very conclusive video but anyway uh, it shows say good practice and how you can do this uh, take a piece of lacquered copper wire and say in a kind of way braid it on that form And the good thing is that you, you can easily make taps. You can see it here. I made a few taps here. One, two, three, four, five, etc. And uh, of course, when a coil, when you have a coil, this is a very, very sloppy, sloppy uh, drawing, but anyway, when you have a coil, here and it is tapped this could be ferrite by the way or another material and when it is tapped and we have here a capacitor parallel to it it is it's a tuned circuit it's a tank circuit but say when you have taps you can say um, use it in such a way that the frequency uh, changes and that means that you can get to another frequency band and now uh, say note here 500 picofarad say for am or am coils etc etc but when you shortcut the part of the coil here the windings are smaller are less means that the frequency goes higher and that's what I've done here so classical old-school radio theory 
and well the oscillator works and i will give the link in the description and here is say the front it's an oscillator that works say in a quite low frequency band between say 635 kilo cycles and 141 kilo cycles and here there's kind of remark that I could that you or I could get to higher frequencies but anyway the whole setup is meant in such a way here that it is a kind of low frequency radio oscillator and well does it give good uh, waveforms that's always very important when you want to do radio experiments is the sine wave pure etc etc well uh, the schematic is in uh, you can find the schematic in the text box and here only a demo of what it can make this is say the waveform on 785 kilohertz and you can directly see that it is not very stable but for say uh, experimental purposes this can work very good this waveform looks quite good 786 785 well anyway that's not very not very stable but that has everything of course everything to do with say the the way that you make such an oscillator now it's a completely open coil uh, when you make such a coil in another way more uh, compressed in a certain way and um, say uh, make all these things uh, less sloppy that's what I have to tell uh, you could get with such a setup to a quite stable frequency anyway uh, well is there something more to tell well uh, no here is say how the coil is made anyway and I want to demonstrate perhaps uh, some frequencies uh, this is quite a good sine wave on 785 kilohertz uh, well let me try to get another frequency say you can also meet when you make such an oscillator this waveform here and on 3 zero five kilohertz that's of course say it is usable for a superheterodyne receiver but surely not ideal because all these peaks etc that will give uh, harmonics etc etc but when you say bring back the audio level here it could be that the waveform gets better. No, it doesn't get very, very much better anyway. But that was not the aim of this video. The only aim of this video was to show that you can make a flat coil. And when you know a little bit about electronics, these flat coils were uh, often used in the past in, say, the old school 1920s radios but also in modern uh, radios and television sets of the 1980s 1970s say when these flat cores were made on a say a board here uh, say in this way Well, this is very sloppy, but anyway, I'm sure you will understand it. Uh, say etched on the board, and uh, in that case, it had a 
certain frequency. Especially in the higher frequencies, VHF and uh, HF, uh, that was a kind of ideal solution because when etched on the board, uh, everything was fixed. So the, the say the internal capacitance, um, uh, the inductance, of course, all these values were fixed. And it means that such a, uh, an oscillator, VHF oscillator, could work very, very properly. And then I mean especially stable on one frequency. But, uh, well, anyway, thanks for watching. Pen over somewhat. This was in a certain way only an idea about how to say make coils, flat coils. And let's try to get uh, to a frequency where we have a proper sine wave. I want to end with a proper sine wave. Well, I think that will be not successful. In this case, any way takes a oh well. Here is a good sine wave. Anyway, 801. Kilohertz. This is the waveform, and when I limit the output level a little bit, we get a good sine wave. So this is surely say a way with such a flat coil to make a good quality oscillator. Thanks for watching.